Hey everyone, welcome back to Control. Last time, we failed to save Philip from a killer fridge, which honestly had a deserved vendetta against him. Now I figured we're going to need to tour the Panopticon at some point. I was going to do it after I found more altered items, but we're here. I can levitate. Why not just go ahead and get this out of the way? We can come back later if we really want to see the altered items in their natural habitat. It's easy enough to get to pretty much everywhere in the room right now, but most places are just these little useless dead ends with fortified units that we can't open. I don't even know what's inside them, really. Or if there is anything inside them. To be honest, most of the room isn't going to be all that interesting, and we have already seen a good portion of it. But we also do get to have a little fun. Always good to get a hiss elevated on your side. And I thought there was another guy there I could seize, but he dropped out of sight. I'm kind of surprised at how many enemies are showing up here. But the Panopticon is pretty well populated. I mean, lots of altered items, so of course there's going to be a lot of supernatural influence around. And there's my flying buddy doing his last bit of work. Still someone around to kill. I can hear the music. Gotta be downstairs. There we go. You can have that back. Still someone else. Aha. That does the job. So, back to making our tour. There's the elevator over there, and this was the bridge that we first took to get there. I do want to come back down this hallway just so I can look up at the ceiling and see if they've hidden anything away up there. Probably not. I mean, there's more floors above this one. But you never know. They hide stuff in all kinds of weird places. We've already stopped by and seen all the altered items that are here. That hammer we still don't know anything about. And then this elevator only goes straight up to the fourth floor. I don't want to do that. In this case, I want to take advantage of the scaffolding that's between every pair of floors here. This is just to make it much easier to navigate vertically with your levitation ability. And that's the way up to the third floor, but I want to make the circuit of the second floor before I go up. One more ability would have been nice to unlock to help me get around a little faster here. But I'm not too concerned. We'll get everywhere eventually. It's just that most of the places we're going to find are empty and useless. We will get to see the archives, though. I could have come in here before, but it wouldn't have done us a whole lot of good, because there is a level 6 door in the archives. We needed the keycard to get through. And more of the weird stuff that happens whenever you levitate. This case is randomly falling over. I'll come back to the archives in a second, but I want to see what altered items are down here. There's the wolf globe! The one that doesn't look much like the real Earth and disorients anyone who touches it. And there's the Christmas tree that speaks in a high-pitched voice and skips certain words. And the smoking pram. You can even see the smoke from here. And finally, a locked cell. We can't even see what's in it. I don't think we have any documentation on any of the locked cells. 
you know, no altered items that they created and came up with concepts for, but don't actually let you see. Not really sure what the point would be. Anyway, just gotta wait for the loading corridor to finish. And we've got a couple of his charged hanging out here. In at least some cases, I can take them out before they notice that I'm here. And if you notice there in the back, there is an astral spike roaming around here. Unfortunately, it's going to be in the way for a lot of the exploration that I'm going to do, so if you have photosensitivity issues, I'm going to put some descriptions of where the important documents are. There's no flashing during those times. Otherwise, you might want to just skip to the end of the archives and pick up from there. Yep, security screen telling us that the Panopticon cells have been breached. We kind of already knew that. And here's the first of our documents. I believe this is the final book report on Unless You that we're going to find. And if you do take the time to pause and read it, or look it up in the documents afterwards, the interesting thing to note is this was written by Fridge Guy, Philip Filson. Yeah, it's unrealistic that in a deadly situation, somebody would just sit there and follow orders until it killed them. It seems like all of the book reports are laced with irony. Not really sure what's up on this floor. There are a lot of pictures of a guy I don't know. Is it the Grover Cleveland? Maybe that was the previous director. Well, it seems kind of weird, because Trench developed the Panopticon. Yeah, that guy didn't turn out too well, but at least he's not his. I was kind of hoping maybe there'd be something behind him, but there's not. Well, I do at least get something for exploring up here. Nothing of particular interest, so we're going to have to go into the wide open section with the Astral Spike. Again, this flashing is going to persist pretty much on and off for the next eh, 20 minutes or so. There are a lot of hiss to fight here. They just kind of keep spawning over and over again. At the very least, hiss also like to fight astral spikes for some reason, even though they can't do any damage, and it's just going to kill them over and over. The high ground here is pretty safe, unless I'm fighting hiss that can shoot at me from a distance. The Astral Spike can't get to this platform, but it will climb the stairs. Right now, it seems to be eating all the explodey hiss. And that's fine. If they want to be out of my line of sight, they're welcome to it. Yeah, there is something to pick up down there, but I'm not getting too close right now. I'm going to try to lure the Astral Spike away from it, and then make a run for it. So in the meantime, I'll go ahead and search the upper floors. That's the direction I came from. But there are a few things to find on these upper floors in this section, too. A couple more unfamiliar pictures. And an office that at least seems to have some protective cages over the windows. Yeah, 
You know, the thing you probably noticed about Langston is he's really interested in actually learning about the altered items and studying them, not from the perspective of learning scientific stuff about them, but from learning how they work, what they are, what they want. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You kind of wonder why nobody else sees it that way. These little side offices, records rooms and whatnot, the Astral Spike can't get in, and I don't think Hiss can get in either. Or at least they probably won't. The rewards are minimal, but if you know about breakable walls, you can get a little more out of the experience. Kind of a weird space back here. Nothing all that special, but there is a poster here. I was kind of hoping it would be an interesting one, but no, it's the same posters that appear everywhere else. Somebody just put it inside a wall. Or maybe the house did that. It might actually be a better charge velocity boost than the one that I previously had. Oh, yeah, that's, that's definitely better. It's like three times faster. We'll get around to doing some cleanup later. Ah. Thought that might be a document, but it's just a radio that somehow ended up there. Alright, one more office area on this floor, and this one we need level 6 clearance to get in. Tough to know why, it's mostly just empty shelves. And... desks, I guess? Not going to go off to the research sector just yet. Down the far end is our real reward for getting into this room. The exact process of how an altered item is born eludes us. We find them in the aftermath of altered world events. They take the form of everyday objects, ever-present in our lives, constantly evoked in the thoughts of millions of people, now infused with unpredictable energies. They're altered. The superstitious would call them cursed. Now, are altered items sentient? Not quite. They're often fixated, programmed almost to cause certain events to happen over and over again. While generally less potent than objects of power, they are not able to be controlled. Left unchecked, they, they can be highly dangerous. To study altered items, we contain them in Panoptica. Not particularly informative, I don't think. We'll see more about the formation of altered items later. But that's the end of this floor, so up we go. Once again, temporarily getting out of the range of the Astral Spike. Keep expecting there to be something at the end of the hallway, or... The shiny ductwork kind of looks like something I might be able to fly up into but there's nothing like that. Yep, it has already come up to the third floor, so let's duck in here to get away from it. More locker space, I guess. Ah, we do have a document, though.
Like I said, Langston seems to have developed an almost emotional connection to the altered items. Kinda weird, and on the other hand, it makes a lot more sense than most of the other stuff I've seen. Alright, should be one more side office. But a whole lot of hiss that we gotta get through to get to it. And with the Astral Spike closing in, I think I'll just let them deal with them themselves for a while. Okay, I'll let my friend hide in here with me. Let the Astral Spike take care of the hiss. Yeah, you want to get in. You can't figure out how. Can't figure out how a door works. But my friend is not going to survive, so let's take a break and watch some TV. I didn't blank the sound there, that was just the way it sounded. And if ever there was an episode of Threshold Kids that worked better with the Hiss Battle music playing over it, that was the one. In the meantime, I'm gonna go get that chest that I left for later. Eh, remote thought, not too exciting. Got a Hiss Trooper to deal with. And it may actually be time to show off why I think the Seize upgrade that I powered my way to is one of the best ones. Because now, the His Trooper is on my side. Although, he's way down there and all the other Hiss are way up here. Including another His Trooper. who's already dead for some reason. Nope, that's just the spike. I'm not going to be able to do anything to that. There are actually places I can get to on the ground floor. And once again, I'm going to let the hiss and the spike play with each other while I come down here and reap my rewards. I'm going to skip the chest in the center of the room for the moment and make my way around the edges first. 
I think launch efficiency is going to be pretty good for some situations coming up. Alright, nothing else. Let's just go... Yeah, the chest just farted or something. Welcome to Control Mimics. Unlike Dark Souls Mimics, you can't make them reveal themselves by attacking them. You have to open it and get to the prize inside. Only the prize is about 30 hiss charged. They're just going to keep popping out of this box. And while it may seem like standing my ground isn't the best strategy, you don't get a lot of room to retreat. There's a barrier over the door that I came in through. I have taken this fight before by backing up a bit. Not recommended. Because that's all the room you get to retreat. You need to have empty space at your back as much as you possibly can. Or just ignore it, but if you die here and come back, I believe the chest is closed again. Not that I'm aware of there being any actual reward for opening it. It just feels kind of weird to me to have a chest unopened, even if I know all that's inside it is death. But alright, that's dealt with. I want to check out the other side. I think there are restrooms over there. Yeah, here we go. It doesn't seem like there are any rewards inside the restroom. But you know me. Gotta search everything. Alright, back into the breach one last time. I was kind of wondering if maybe there was a counterpart restroom somewhere, but I don't think there is. I think there's just that women's room there and... No analogous men's room anywhere. Or maybe the sign was unisex. Couldn't really tell in this lighting. Alright, so anyone who's had their eyes closed this whole time and has just been listening, now it's safe. We're out of the astral spike. Waiting for the Panopticon to load... And now we'll continue making our way around the outside. I guess I have been in there already. There's the elevator over there, and I missed my jump. Alright, scaffolding is back over here, and don't worry, I will speed through at least some of the repetitive and uninteresting parts of this traversal. Oh, this isn't even the elevator. It's just another big empty area. It's the other annoying part about making your way around the Panopticon is that these bridges are just positioned so that if you do a full height jump from any of the platforms, you'll hit your head on the bridge as you're trying to fly past it. Now here's something. You can get over to the sides of the elevator shaft here. The indicator for what's supposed to be on the third floor is still redacted. I still have no idea what it is. Now, I can't think of anything on the third floor that might actually be interesting about it. Yeah, I think this is the second floor landing, and nothing interesting here either. It's weird, because you'd think that would have been one of the most obvious places to hide something good. But the elevator doesn't stop on those floors, because there's nothing there. 
It looks like the edge of that door is open a little bit, but you still can't get in. And I'm pretty sure we were in here before. Got the surfboard over there. Rubber duck again. Yep, looks like it still blinks. But maybe that was just the haze coming off it. An empty cell. Something will eventually show up there once I've brought it back here. And that's all for this section. So, moving on. Another dead end of no consequence. And that appears to be it for the third floor, so... We need to use this scaffolding to head up to the fourth floor. Don't really know why that one's different, but I guess it's nice to have some variety. And hey, here's another reason I love the upgraded C's ability. I now have a healing friend orb. And, admittedly, the teleportation effect is really creepy. But it will follow wherever I go and just heal any damage I take, as long as it's able. You're really never in a lot of trouble when you have a friend orb. And over that way is where I originally found the Benikoff TV. So, I will make my way in there shortly. I'm going to finish those guys off first, get another remote thought. I know those are kind of a limiting factor. That must be one of the missing alternate items. Yep. So the traffic light altered item is right back where the Benikoff TV was. And we gotta sneak up on it carefully. Wait, how did I get back here? See, everybody knows this game. You can only move when the light is green. If you move when the light is red, you go back to the start and try again. I'm pretty sure while it's flying away, it doesn't actually have any effect, but standing still is probably the best practice anyway. So, round two, and I just realized I'm not going to be able to stop in time. Floating just kind of automatically counts as movement. We're going to have to take it on foot. Once you're on the ground, there's not a whole lot of challenge to this. Just gotta be patient. Nope, oh, thought I was close enough. Gotta wait one more cycle. One less escaped altered item to worry about. Yeah, not hard to imagine what pattern of thought gave rise to this particular AI. And I have already pretty thoroughly explored this area, since I had just gotten my levitation ability. I guess maybe that actual room might have had more stuff, like up near the ceiling, but... 
I don't know. I'm kind of concerned that the video might get too long if I spent too much time exploring areas I'd already been to. So yeah, the traffic light, surprisingly difficult to find because you're not necessarily going to think to go back to the place you already found an altered item slash object of power. And the guidance that we have just says Panopticon, so it could be anywhere in here. And finally we have a dead end with some actual stuff in it. Not to mention, more altered items. That we don't seem to have in captivity at the moment. Oh, there we go. The traffic light that I just brought back. If I'd come over here first, that cell would have been empty. Another empty cell, but at least now we can read a little more about the pram. Kind of interesting. If you remember, we found a document saying that all the records of the pram were destroyed in a fire, so they conducted that interview 30 years after the fact. And this is also kind of interesting. We've got this shortcut back to the other side of the bridge. Doesn't really do a whole lot for us, I don't think. And yeah, here we are, back at the control point. And the fridge is right nearby. N nobody to talk to in there anymore. I'll remember that if I need to sterilize any of my crucibles. But then we're back to the elevator. So, I want to get back to the outside here, and the gate seems to be closed. Honestly, I don't think the gate would open even once the elevator gets up here. Because we're not meant to go out there from this side. We're just supposed to make our way around back to the bridge. Dang, that thing's slow. I want to see about getting up to the top of the elevator shaft sometime, but not particularly important. One of these windows ought to be open, but nope, guess not. So we're back on the bridge. There's the elevator, and I don't think there's anything else that we can get to on this floor. Yep, yet more combat, and I accidentally killed the cluster before I could seize it. So I'm going to have to make do with just the health pickups I can get. And being a little low on energy. I didn't say that should be everyone, but I guess there's more guys under the bridge. There are always guys under the bridge. And I keep grabbing stuff that's on top of the bridge and failing to throw it at anyone. Okay, this particular fight is going on way too long. I just want to make it up to floor 5, please. I managed to catch that rocket long after it had gone past. I can't hit anybody from this position. Alright, let's see if I can just get far enough away from them that they stop following me. Or hide in another useless dead end.
They still milling about down there? Yep, they are. Okay, I did not leave myself in a very good position. Alright, I can find my way out of this. And they're all just kind of hiding around corners. Won't do them much good. But I don't know where that hiss elevated went. I guess it only temporarily disappeared. And now there's another cluster nearby. Okay, take two of just forgetting all these guys and going straight to floor five. They've already been in there. There's another opening over on this side. And I think this is all area that we've been to before. Because we came up here, we saw the swan boat on our way to the P6 cell. I think we saw some documentation about that balloon last time. Nothing over here, and again... I tried to start levitating, couldn't get enough of a foothold. And I'm pretty sure the enemies will appear again as I try to make my way across, but... Nowhere else to go. At least I can get some health along the way. really want to know where that cluster is. There it is. It's hiding under the bridge. Not gonna worry about it. We've got more places to go. We got the water cooler. Crowbar, and Dylan's cell. And this is me getting distracted and forgetting to ever actually go into Dylan's cell. As I remember in post that there was actually a level 6 door down that way that I'm going to need to go back for. I'll get it eventually. Meanwhile, yet another extension of the elevator shaft. Yet more empty corridors that don't go anywhere. And I don't believe it's possible to go up from here. Guess it could be worth trying at some point, but caught myself that time. See, out here would be the most likely place to be able to get up to floor 6 and beyond, but there is an invisible ceiling. It is impossible to go any higher in the Panopticon than this. Pretty sure that's going to be the last empty dead end for the road. I actually get an ability point for coming in here. So, you can guess that this place is pretty special. Here's why. Not that. Next cell. I used to know where fiction ends and reality begins. Here, they're all the same. It's a hideous trap my every thought made real. Fear, desire. How can I ever know for sure I've escaped and not just lost in my own fantasy of it? That thought alone can drive you insane. Yep, a hotline-style call, Alan Wake music, and the typewritten page. More Alan Wake crossover. 
I do plan to touch on some of the Alan Wake crossover stuff later on, especially since there's an entire DLC dedicated to it. But not yet, and if you're wondering what the lines are that are readable on the typewritten page, we'll learn that later too. And yep, there's the thermos. It's probably giving some people a heart attack that I can't go in there and collect it. But there you go, a secret location that's entirely dedicated to Alan Wake references. And okay, I was wrong. This is the last empty dead end. And that takes us back to where we came up to level 5. Yeah, you can see it goes at least to level 8 in the part of the Panopticon that we can see, but I've tried floating up there, and even at the point where you should have enough height to make it, you don't make it. Yeah, I hear more hiss coming. Not paying attention in the least. Kinda tempted to maybe unlock some of this stuff. I do definitely want to get more levitation. Because making my way around here with the minimum levitation duration has been a bit of a pain. And there is a very nice ability that unlocks based on unlocking that. And now that I think about it, I don't believe I ever actually got around to updating any of my weapons to level 3, even though I got an untapped potential. I need to do that at some point. But for now, we'll leave it here. That's pretty much everything to worry about in the Panopticon. Excuse me, doing an outro. Next time, we'll go do some more side quest stuff. See you then.